Yeah, Jake Sullivan said recently that the US, United States would be watching very carefully the level of number of deaths, actually, and level of destruction in, in Rafah specifically. Given the number of deaths and the level of destruction that we are seeing in Rafah, and today you have Israeli tanks that entered the, the, the zone, and you have already over 800,000, if not more, Palestinians who you know, fled uh, the zone. Um, has Israel crossed the red lines that Biden has, uh, that the president has uh, given? It, it is something that we can, t the, the, when it comes to their military operations in Rafa, as I just said in response um, uh, to Ellen's question, it's something that we continue to look at very closely. And as I just said, it so far is a different operation um, than we've seen in Khan Yunus and that we saw in Gaza City. But this is something we watch every day and something that we engage with the government of Israel about every day. Um, as we talk to them about what their plans are and what US policy might be, and as we talk to them about the need to minimize civilian harm and co conduct their strikes in a way that minimizes civilian harm. And, and it, it, I know that the question is not just about the fire that broke out over the weekend that killed uh, upwards of 40 individuals, and I know uh, injured uh, many more, but, but um, it is about everything, and we look at everything, but I do think it's important when you look at that strike it, to find out what the actual cause of the fire is. Israel has said that it might have been that there was a Hamas ammo uh, dump near the area where they took the strike, which as I said, they claim was 1.7 uh, uh, kilometers outside the area where they had told um, civilians uh, to move. That's a very important factual question that needs to be answered when it comes to making these sort of assessments. So what we are pressing the government of Israel to do is to conduct an investigation, present those facts publicly, so we, along with the rest of the world, can make the kind of assessments that we need to be able to do. Um, Matt, so, um, I mean, there has been a lot of mistakes like this, correct? Um, I just, first, let me establish, does the United States believe that Israel, uh, what happened over the weekend was a result of a mistake? Uh, so, we are going to wait to see the full results of the investigation. We've seen, as I said, the preliminary investigation where Israel has claimed, Israel has said that they launched, they used the smallest bomb available to them to go after a very precise target. This wasn't a 500 pound bomb or a 2,000 pound bomb. I think it was like a 37 uh, 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 kilogram or 37 pound bomb, a much smaller weapon designed to hit one site 1.7 kilometers away from the Mawasi area where they have told uh, civilians to, uh, to move. Now, that said, clearly something happened. And what happened? We've seen Israel's claim that it might have been the results of uh, hitting a Hamas ammo depot. It's not clear to me that they actually know. Um, uh, but they need to find out. They need to conduct the investigation. <laughs> and we're going to eagerly await the investigation and press them to make sure that, it, that uh, uh, the results of that investigation are presented openly and transparently to us and to the world. Right. So um, if we take the initial uh, statements, uh, Netanyahu said it was a tragic mistake. Um, there has been a lot of headlines with, that, with those same comments, right? World Central Kitchen killings were also a tragic mistake. There was another one late last year on Magazi camp that Israel has also called a mistake. Those are the two that comes to mind. There are, I can find numerous other incidents. Is the United States comfortable sending this many weapons to an army that seems to be making a series of mistakes? So let me say this. We are not comfortable with the loss of civilian Harm, or civilian life in any way, shape, or form. And I think we have made that quite clear. Number two, with respect to each of these incidents, it's important to find out what happened, why it happened, and who was at fault. And so it's important that this investigation proceed before we make any assessments uh, uh, that will help you answer that question. We've seen preliminary results. We want to see the full results. Oh. That said, and, and I'll say in, in previous investigations, so example, with, for example, with the World Central Kitchen uh, investigation uh, strike, Israel did conduct an investigation and presented those uh, findings publicly and then made changes in response to those findings, which we thought it was very important that they do. This seems to be a very different kind of strike, whereas in the World Central Kitchen, they made a mistake about what the target was, and they thought they were targeting Hamas terrorists, and they were not. That was a very clear mistake. In this instance, they were targeting what seems to be legitimate targets, and they were successful in taking out those targets. And then, likely as a result, there was this fire that broke out. It's not clear how it was ignited, especially, as I said, when it's 
over a, a kilometer and a half from the location of the strike. We need to find out how that happened. And if there are procedures that they need to take the, that they need to put in place to prevent it from happening again, we expect them to put those procedures in place. When it comes to our policy, we have made clear that we oppose any full-scale uh, military operation and that what the ramifications to our policy would be of them launching such an operation in Rafah. We haven't seen them do that yet, but as I said, it, it is something that we are watching every day day and are in communication with them every day right yeah. but um but in sorry a couple of more things in terms of the accountability measures you say that after the wck attack there has been some changes um but we, if we look at other incidents the killing of shirin abu akle for example and there has been a series of different incidents that involved a large amount of killings of civilians it doesn't look like the accountability measures are reprimanding certain forces. Are those really enough for the United States? I mean, we're I mean, we're talking about like the death of actual people here. We're talking about loss of life. Is the United States comfortable that several soldiers here and there are reprimanded? But what seems to continue to happen is there is a pattern of behavior and that doesn't get to change in a large scale. So, Are you okay with that? So uh, what we expect Israel to do is the same thing that we expect of our own military and the same thing that we expect of all our democratic allies and partners. We expect when uh, people inside their military make mistakes or when they operate outside of compliance with their rules of engagement, their own rules of engagement, or they operate uh, outside of compliance with international humanitarian law. We expect them to fully investigate what happened. We expect them to make changes to policy if changes to policy need to be made. And we expect them to hold people accountable if accountability is appropriate. Now, with respect to the premise of your question, we're still in the middle of a conflict and they have a number of investigations open, including criminal investigations into people who potentially violated international humanitarian law or violated Israeli law or violated the IDF's code of conduct. So I, no, I think it's too early to draw any broad sweeping assessments about that question. Investigations take time and it's important that they run their course, but it's important that if accountability is, is merited, that accountability is what takes place and we will be um, crystal clear with the government of Israel about their obligations to meet those standards. I have a million follow-ups to that, but I'm sure my colleagues will do. I have one final broader question I want to put to you. So since the start of this conflict, but specifically since U.S. response to ICC over the weekend, there's been a lot of accusation that U.S. is actually eroding the very rules-based order it has long promoted, particularly against China and Russia, because certain truths, they say, are in contradiction to its policies when it comes to the war in Gaza. I'm just wondering, are you not worried that your credibility in the world is on the line here? We have heard people make the same claim about the United States in the past. Uh, I'm sure that they will make it in the future. I can tell you we apply the same standards, the same approach, and require the same set of behaviors uh, out of all our partners anywhere in the world. Can I Go just ahead. Have a Go. Yeah. Yeah. On, you were saying that on the strike today... It seems like you were saying... No, I'm sorry, the strike on Sunday. You seem to be saying two things. One of them that the Israeli military hit 1.8 miles away and 0.7 kilometers kilometers that's what that is what they have said but another point you said that the civilians were 1.7 kilometers away from where they were supposed to be which was it uh maybe i misspoke i don't remember but the point i was trying to make is the location of this, their strike if you look at what the idf has said publicly was 1.7 kilometers away from the Almawasi site where they have told civilians to so go. Was it the civilians' fault for being where they are? No, that, that is not that is not the point. That is not I don't believe that's I don't believe that's the point I've made. It's certainly not the point I, I intended. The point was the fire took it uh, uh, broke out in the Almawasi camp where civilians have fled. The strike was one point seven kilometers away from there. How a strike one point seven kilometers away ignited a fire that spread to that camp and led to that horrific loss of life is something that needs to be investigated. The IDF has said that there isn't they're investigating and we are pressing them for for results. Can I just ask you a specific yeah. question on that? Over the weekend it was reported um, that there was a US official who said that Israel told the US that it used the precision um, munition to hit the target, but that they believed it was shrapnel from the explosion that ignited a fuel tank nearby and started the fire. 
I am no military expert, but I don't understand how shrapnel could have flown 1.7 kilometers in I, order to ignite that fire. I am not familiar with um, uh, that conversation. All I can tell you is what they have said publicly, which is um, it might have been that there was a Hamas weapons depot located near the strike and that exploded and that led to the fire. I don't know if that's true. I'm not sure if Israel knows if that's true at this point. They've only conducted a preliminary investigation. But the point of all of this is that question needs to be answered very much. And we expect them to conduct a full, transparent, open investigation to answer it.